Hello children, how are you this morning? I hope you're well and that you had a nice week. So we are going to do another lesson today and before we do that, please get your Bible, notebook and pen and be ready to write something from what we are going to be learning today. Okay. Um, and as we do that, let's pray as we begin. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for watching over us and keeping us safe. We thank you for the opportunity to believe in you. We pray that you keep growing us in our knowledge of you from your word and help us to live for you for the glory of your name give us understanding even as we go through your word in Jesus' name i've prayed amen amen all right so for the past two sundays we've been looking at parables jesus told or short stories jesus told and we say parables are stories with a hidden meaning and the parables we've looked at were told in the context where Jesus was talking to different people who came to listen to him. And among them were sinners and tax collectors. So the Pharisees started complaining that he hangs out with sinners and tax collectors. And for Jesus to explain that actually sinners are just as important, especially if they repent and turn to God. He told the Pharisees short stories that had hidden meaning, that had a lesson to teach. So we saw the parable of the lost sheep. We looked at the parable of the lost coin. And today we are seeing the lost son. <coughs> Sorry. We are taking our lesson today from Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 3. And then verse 11 to 32. But before we dive into the lesson, I have a question for you to think about. Imagine three people came to you and they all did something wrong. And they were asking you to forgive them. So one of them stole something that belongs to you. Another abused you. And then another killed someone that you know and they all came to you and asked you to forgive them who among those would you find easy to forgive and why so if you have a neighbor you could tell them who it is you'd forgive a thief someone who abused you or someone who killed another person and why because in the story we are looking at today, someone asked for forgiveness. They did something bad, something wrong, and asked for forgiveness. First, we are going to see what they did wrong and whether they were forgiven when they asked for forgiveness. <coughs> so turn with me to Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 3, then verse 11 to 32. I'm going to read part of it, or maybe all of it, and we see. So, like I said, the context is Jesus is talking to people, telling them about the kingdom of God, and then there's this big group of people who are listening to him, and among them are people who are considered sinners and tax collectors. And the Pharisees don't want Jesus to talk to them. So this is how it goes. Luke chapter 15, I'm going to read. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him, to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. So that's up to verse 3. So let's jump to verse 11. Jesus continued. So he told the first two parables. This is the third. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. 
so he divided his property between the between them not long after that the younger son got together all he had set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living verse 14 after he had spent everything there was a severe famine in the whole country and he began to be in need so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to feed to his field to feed pigs he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating but no one gave him anything when he came to his senses he said how many of my father's hired men have food to spare and here i am starving to death i will set out and go back to my father and say to him father i've sinned against heaven and against you i'm no longer worthy to be your to be called your son make me like one of your hired men so he got up and went to his father so i've read up to verse 20 let me tell you the rest of it so he goes to his father and his plan is to tell him father i'm so sorry please forgive me for asking for my half of the property and then going and wasting it and then just treat me like one of your servants don't treat me like your son anymore but when he went home for some reason his father was watching the road and when he saw him from a distance he ran and gave him a big hug and welcomed him and told his servants <coughs> to give him the best robe and prepare a big party for him before the son even had a chance to say i'm sorry treat me like your servant so verse 20 part of verse 20 says but while he was still a long way off his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him he ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him the son said to him father i've sinned against heaven and against you i'm no longer worthy to be called your son verse 22 but the father said to his servants quick bring the best robe put it on him put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet bring the fattened calf and kill it let's have a feast and celebrate um for this son of mine was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found so they began to celebrate meanwhile the older son was in the field when he came near the house he had music and dancing so he called one of the servants and asked what was going on your brother has come home he replied and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has he has him back safe and sound verse 28 the older brother became angry and refused to go in so his father went out and pleaded with him but he answered his father look all these years i've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders yet you never gave me even a young goat so i could celebrate with my friends but when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home you kill the fattened calf for him my son the father said you're always with me and everything i have is yours but we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive he was lost and is found so here we have a father with two sons the younger one takes his half of the property and wastes it the older one stays home when the younger one comes back home to ask his father to for forgiveness his father welcomes him and celebrates the older son is not happy about it and he says i have been here the whole time i've done everything you've asked and you've never thrown a party for me. But my younger brother, who has been misbehaving, comes home and you're celebrating. And the father says, we have to celebrate. Verse, uh, sorry, my Bible flipped. Verse 32. We had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Like 
we had lost him, but now he has come back. So we have to celebrate about that. So Jesus told this parable to Pharisees who were saying, why are you hanging out with sinners? Why are you welcoming them? Why are you eating with them? <coughs> he told this parable to teach or explain that God always welcomes sinners who repent into his kingdom, no matter how they have treated him. I'll read that again. God always lovingly welcomes sinners who repent into his kingdom, no matter how they have treated him. So this boy or son had actually not treated his father well. But when he repented, his father welcomed him. <coughs> In this parable, God is like the father. And the boy who went away is like one of the sinners. If they repent and come back, God will forgive them. So the younger son turned away from the father. We are like him in many ways. Oftentimes we do things that don't please God or we sin against God. But when we repent, God forgives us and welcomes us. Just like he forgave, the father forgave that son and welcomed him. The older son stayed home, but he still needed to repent. He stayed home and always did what was right, but with, not with the right attitude. <coughs> he thought, because I'm staying home, I should have a party. In fact, they should not celebrate my brother. He has misbehaved. I should be the one they celebrate. A little like the Pharisees were telling Jesus, why are you hanging out with the sinners? They are bad. You should be with us. So the brother, the older brother, was behaving a bit like the Pharisees. It's like, you should, I should be the one celebrated. I'm the one who's doing the right things. The one who has been doing the wrong things should be punished. Actually, Maybe stay away from them. That's what the Pharisees were telling Jesus. Stay away from the sinners and tax collectors. Hang out with us because we are good, they are bad. So this son was like the older son. I have been good, he has been bad. You should celebrate me, not him. But the father in the story lovingly welcomed the son who had gone away and wasted his wealth when he repented. But he also patiently went and explained to the older son who was refusing to come and join the party. <coughs> In the same way, God always lovingly welcomes sinners who repent into his kingdom, no matter how they have treated him. Do you remember the, list, the question I asked you at the beginning? If three people came to you, one stole, one abused, and one killed, and they asked you for forgiveness, who would you find easy to forgive? Chances are that you said maybe the one who abused or maybe the one who stole, and maybe you wouldn't want to forgive the one who killed. But in this, we see that regardless of what a person has done, Regardless of what sin they've committed, if they genuinely repent, God will lovingly welcome them. God is just like the father in the story. He loves us and wants all of us to live with him forever. He is happy and welcomes everyone who says sorry and puts their trust in Jesus. He welcomes them in his kingdom. So he doesn't think this one took everything, wasted it, wasted their lives. Now they are coming to say sorry, I'm not forgiving them. He doesn't think like that. Or this one killed these people and now he's coming to say sorry and repenting. I won't forgive him. No. Regardless of what someone has done, if they genuinely repent, God will forgive them. 
and that is why Jesus was hanging out with sinners and tax collectors because if they genuinely repent, God will welcome them into his kingdom. So I want you to think, what things have you done wrong? What is the worst thing you think you've done wrong? Do you think it's something that God could easily forgive? Because in our story today and in our lesson, we are seeing that God forgives all sinners who repent. He forgives them and welcomes them into his kingdom. God always, always lovingly welcomes sinners who repent into his kingdom, no matter how they have treated him. So regardless of what you've done, if you repent... God will forgive you and welcome you into his kingdom. So our learning point, I've already said it, but so that we can say it together, it's that God always lovingly welcomes sinners who repent into his kingdom, no matter how they have treated him. Let's read that together. God always lovingly welcomes sinners who repent into his kingdom, no matter how they have treated him. So like I was saying earlier, I want you to think about this past week that just ended and how you've been living. <coughs> and if there's anything that you've done or said or thought that you know is not pleasing to God, Take a moment and repent and trust that God will forgive you because from this parable we are learning that God forgives all those who repent and welcomes them. So let's take a moment and pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you because it's living and active. We also thank you that because you're forgiving God, who forgives those who truly repent. So Lord, we pray that you forgive us for things we've said or done or thought that are not pleasing to you. Help us to live according to your ways and live in a way that pleases you. Help us to obey you. And we pray and thank you that you uh, God who is interested in people who are lost, people who don't believe in you, you want them to repent and turn to you. So Lord, we thank you that you found us. <coughs> and we pray for other people who have not believed in you, that Lord, you will help them hear your word and cause them to respond and repent and believe in you. Because that is something that makes you celebrate. We commit the week into your hands. We pray that you'll be with us and that you'll keep us safe through the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so our memory verse is the same. It has been the same for the past. This is the fourth week. From Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Let's say it together. It should be quite familiar now. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Let's say that again. Luke chapter 15 verse 7. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. I hope this has made sense for you. And I hope that you remember that God forgives those who repent. <coughs> so if you do something wrong, go to God and ask for forgiveness. Because those who repent, he forgives and welcomes into his kingdom. God bless you and have a nice week. Bye.